All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave back again, talking real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. So um, Jonathan Kane from Journey uh, has done a really interesting interview for uh, Cleveland.com as the boys in Journey prepare to do a concert at a place called the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Yeah. You know, Cleveland, they're really good at renaming stuff. So maybe they should call this like the Guardians Stadium or something, you know, be real politically correct. But it's either a corporate name or it's a ridiculous name. I guess it's better than Climate Pledge Arena, right? Oh, man. It's just, hey, man, going to see Journey tonight at the uh, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Uh, yeah, that's a great name for a stadium, just rolls right off the tongue. So anyway, uh, they are preparing to do a gig there. And uh, this Cleveland.com entertainment division, they interviewed the one and only Jonathan Kane. And I think the interview um, got a little interesting when the uh, topic of the CNN debacle on New Year's Eve came up, which I think, you know, now that seems like two years ago, but it was New Year's Eve uh, of this year. Um, and they claim the only harsh buzz on Journey's current tour came on New Year's Eve when the group played as part of ABC's New Year's Rock and Eve program. Following the performance, an admittedly inebriated Andy Cohen declared on CNN that it's not Journey without Steve Perry referencing the iconic frontman from uh, 1977 through 98. A little break there in that as uh, the band basically uh, went away because Steve Perry walked away in 1987. And I'll get to that because that's an important part of this discussion. It's not the first time Kane and his current bandmates have heard that. And after nearly 25 years without Perry and 15 with Arnel Pineda, the Filipino singer Sean discovered via YouTube, uh, they've learned to take it in stride. Well, yeah, of course. Now, Arnel Pineda being the longest tenured vocalist in the band and having a spectacular tour. Can I say that again? Arnel Pineda having a spectacular tour. And there are a few people out there that don't root for him because they think that Steve Perry is going to come back. He's not coming back. Um, and Steve Perry, there's no way on earth Steve Perry could hit these notes in the original key and do it night after night. This is probably one of the reasons Steve Perry walked away in 1987 and then walked away again in 1998. Now, this is what Jonathan Cain says about the uh, Andy Cohen debacle. You know, Steve Perry certainly was a huge part of the architecture and the sound and all that, Kane says. But Neil and I believe in 1998, it wasn't about one guy. Ooh, that's kind of a little nuclear bomb that was dropped there. Uh, it was about the music and the fans. We bet on that and we've been proven right. Now, an interesting little side note to that is Steve Perry got this dream contract, and I've talked about it. Journey is having a very successful tour right now. And some of those elevated ticket prices and, you know, merch prices and things you see, I think the Journey t shirts were like 50 bucks, 40, 50 bucks, which even by today's standards, um, I think 30 should be kind of enough for a t-shirt. But again, there's a new album coming out. There's new graphic, which looks a lot like the captured logo. It's a little flashier um, with the cherub design and all that. But still, that's a lot of money. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is Steve Perry gets a cut of all of this. Now, he gets a smaller cut as time goes on. But from what I understand, it never completely goes away. So Journey could be at this for another 10 years. Who knows? I mean, Neil Sean is 68 years old. Kane, I think, is 70 or 71. 
but you look at them on stage and you, you don't think of these guys as being that old. Um, they have pretty much aged fairly well. I think Neil Sean was finally starting to look like an older guy, like maybe a guy in his fifties, but he doesn't look like this old decrepit guy who's kind of, you know, um, struggling to move around on stage or anything like that. He's not like Brandon. Okay. He can kind of move around. So, uh, and Jonathan Kane too, looks like his life is treating him well, but the whole point to all of that is that Steve Perry is still getting money from the deal they made in 1998. Now, let me go on with the quote here. Um, he talks about uh, New Year's Eve, Kane says, it was a triumphant night for Journey, no matter what anyone says. We know it works, and we know it's good, so we're just going to keep going strong. But this is the big quote here I think that's important. Neil and I believed in 1998 it wasn't about one guy. It was about the music and the fans. Now, if you recall, Steve Perry said, don't crack the stone, which means don't break this apart because this is the sacred lineup with, I guess, depending on what rhythm section Steve Perry wants, you would think it's got to be Kane, Sean, and Perry. In fact, um, I think their existence continued even to 1991 when they did the, the Bill Graham concert and just the three of them showed up right, to do that, and it didn't look like it was a pleasant experience. They just kind of did their thing, went their ways, but there was no um, Ross Valerie, and there wasn't um, Steve Smith. So those three guys, I think, maybe is what fracturing the stone or not fracturing the stone is all about. Now, in 1998, Sean and Kane had seen this movie before, in 1987, Perry walked away with not a whole lot of notice about this. Yeah, they finished the last concert, and that was it, and Perry walked, and then that was the end. The Journey fan club at the time didn't know what to tell people. Um, radio executives were dumbfounded. There wasn't a lot of information about this, and most people were wondering, is that it for Journey? Is that it for Journey? This went on for almost two years. And then finally, Bad English shows up, and that signals the end of Journey because Kane and Sean are now hanging out with Dean Castronovo, who was in Bad English, and of course, John Waite, and I think it was Ricky Phillips. And um, that was Bad English. And uh, you know their single went all the way to number one, which is quite an achievement, something Journey never did. As a band, they got to number two, and I think it was Open Arms stayed at number two for a very long time, but never got to number one. And then you'll have some guy on YouTube saying, this song should have been a hit, should have been a number one song. Well, you had a lot of other good songs on the radio, and they were all competing at the same time. In any event, um, the boys had seen this movie before in 1987. So when Perry said, look, don't rush me. If I want to come back, I'll come back. I don't know if I want to get this surgery. Again, the hip thing, you'll see this on VH1. I've watched it like 10 times. It's, it's a great documentary because there is so much, you could tell there's so much animosity at that point. Perry was just fed up with them. They wanted to go out on the road. This was right around the time where Steve Ajeri joins Journey. And you know, they're highlighting Steve Jerry. I remember the famous quote from Dean Castronovo, look, it's Steve Perry with a perm. Steve Jerry will tell you, you know, I'm not Steve Perry, okay? Um, and he did a great job, especially on the Arrival album. But, you know, how long did his voice last singing those songs night after night? Really difficult thing to do. The point, again, I'm making here is in 98, Sean and Kane were like, here we go again. He comes back to the band, he dictates all the terms, and then he kind of, when things are about to, you know, go live again, where he's going to be out on the road, something happens, and then he can't do it. And then he keeps us waiting for two years, from 96 to 98. So this quote that Kane makes here, 
is that it wasn't about one guy. And that will make some heads explode. <clears throat> People who love Steve Perry, they're like, it was about one guy. It was about Steve Perry. It wasn't about Neil Sean. It wasn't about Jonathan Cain. Well, the three of them made the best music together, right? And people will say, well, Arrival, you can't compare. Arrival was a really good album, a really good album. Again, you didn't have Steve Perry, and then you had Generations, which was, eh, critics hated it, but I thought it was a pretty good album. Um, you just don't have Ross Valerie singing. I think on Revelation, the album with uh, Arnell, his first album, that album from start to finish is fantastic from start to finish. I mean, that sounds like a vintage journey album to me. And then you can argue about Eclipse and we'll see how freedom comes out when it's all out there. But these guys can make songs. They know how to make songs without Steve Perry. Uh, are they as good as Steve Perry songs? People will argue that they're not. And I will argue that radio changed a lot when Journey got back, especially without Perry. By then, radio was not interested in putting Journey on any format. Adult Contemporary took them a little bit. The rock stations were over it. They were playing dark, grungy crap and post-grunge nonsense. So none of it, quite honestly, um, was good for Journey moving forward. But what they've managed to do is continue to be a great touring band. And it appears that they're going to still be a great recording band. But this idea that one person can kind of hold everything up and, hey, you can't do this without me. Don't crack the stone. And Neil Sean's thinking, I started this band with Greg Raleigh back in like 1972, right? Or whatever, 73, 72. And I think it's kind of more my band than anyone else's band. And I would tend to agree with that. I don't know if a court agrees with Neil Sean, but the fact that they're settling out of court with um, Ross Valerie and, and Steve Smith over their uh, golden parachute coup thing that they tried. And everybody's happy now, from what I hear. Those guys are happy with what they got, which again, um, on the surface, it's a little like extortion, you know? And they got what they wanted. And I guess that's good if everybody's happy. And now you've got this powerhouse rhythm section with Dean and um, Todd Jensen. And it's fantastic. The live show right now is amazing. So to me, as a fan, right? And Kane mentions it's about the fans. As a fan, I saw the best journey I could see in the year 2022. If you put Steve Perry on stage with those guys, people would freak out, all right? This is like, again, the president that you like comes back to the band. The president of the United States that you like is touring with Journey, you know, and you're like, okay, I want to see him, but do you want to hear him? That's the question. His presence there is important and fantastic, but would these songs be performed in their full original strength, or would they be watered down, tuned down? That's the big question. And would the experience be as rewarding and fulfilling as watching Arnell run around the stage uh, and hit every single note and do something that few Journey singers in the past have been able to do, which is to have this um, type of longevity. Now, we don't know with Jeff Scott Soto, uh, Jeff's voice is fairly indestructible, but, you know, the argument was that he wasn't the traditional tenor, but uh, could be a tenor, but had more of a baritone voice, which he confirmed on this program, or at least I spoke to him about it. I can't remember if it was on the record or off the record, but that's really the reason um, they didn't stick with Jeff, because Jeff, I think, would still be singing really well. Uh, and is singing really well. So that's how I kind of have insight to that. But Kane's comments here are like, hey, you know, this proves that we could do this without Steve Perry. And yeah, there are people that will never accept that. And I understand why, because Perry in his prime was probably the greatest singer on planet Earth in his prime, right? 
Unfortunately, people get older and this catalog takes its toll on whoever gets to sing it. So I think the band made some smart moves. Um, Neil Sean with Arnell, it ends up being brilliant. In the long run, it's brilliant. It's great PR. It's a rags to riches story. It's now you've got this multi-ethnic component to the band where all of these countries around the, the Pacific Rim region are rooting for Arnell. Uh, and that expands the audience and it makes for almost like a global phenomenon, which I think is really good for the band. Not to say that Steve Perry isn't revered all over the world, he is. But to find somebody who's been there now for 15 years, to plug this impossible hole to fill these shoes, right? And Arnell is humble enough to say, look, if he wanted to come back, I would step aside. And he said that so many times. The problem with that is, I don't know if Perry could manage it, number one, let's just be honest. And number two, Perry doesn't want to come back. <laughs> he doesn't, I've said this, you know, people asked me this like five years ago when I started doing this. I'm like, I don't think Steve Perry wants to come back. But he has that kind of power because he did it to the boys in 87. And then he did it to them again in 96. And then he did something else in 98. And they're like, okay, enough. We gave him all this control. And now we're just kind of without a band. And I'll tell you what, branding, a brand name is really important. And in the case of Journey, these guys played it right because now they can play Don't Stop Believing every night and have people just melt down in a good way and enjoy the show. And really, like I, like I said, other than seeing Perry in 1981 with this band, which you, there's no way there's nobody is, you can't top that. All right. <laughs> I'm struggling for words because I'm thinking back going, yeah, no, Steve, uh, Steve Perry journey escape tour. Yeah, no. I mean, watch the live in Houston concert. Um, Nothing's going to top that. But for the year 2022, this is as good as you're going to get when it comes to Journey. And I agree with Jonathan Kane. This is not about one guy. This is about amazing music, putting that out there for the fans to enjoy and giving people some freedom, which is what this album is called. So uh, good on Jonathan Kane for kind of sticking up for the brand. It also shows that he and Neil Sean have repaired any kind of rift that there was. And I think it was more from Sean's side than Kane's, but you know, we'll never know all of that stuff. I know a lot of it, but um, it's complicated. It's really complicated. And it's cool to see everybody firing on all cylinders. So if you're in the Cleveland area, right? And you want to go see Journey at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, because it just rolls right off the tongue. You can go to rocketmortgagefieldhouse.com and purchase some tickets. Um, it's so worth it. It's definitely something that you want to do in the year 2022. I think it's the concert event of the year, quite frankly. All right, people, done with this one. Thanks again. A Patreon for a dollar a month. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you soon.